What's going on, folks? I, I'm cleaning up a little bit. You might know about that. Hey, and I got some junk out here in the shop. I'm gonna scrap it out today. But I've been uh, looking around and I think some of you guys might need to know exactly, <laughs> you know, the basics. What's inside of a triplex plunger pump, a pressure washer pump? Today, I'm gonna tear one apart. I'm scrapping it out. And we'll just talk about the components that we'll find on the inside. You need to know. Show you what we're talking about. <laughs> Nothing against any brand. This is just the pump I happen to have. The pump looks and works like any other pump that you see built of this configuration. The difference in this pump, other than brand, this is set up for a direct drive application. That will slide right over a one inch crankshaft, driving it directly versus a pump like this over here. It has an external shaft. You can either adapt a gearbox to it or put some pulleys on it to get it turned into RPMs required for your application. So what I want to talk about today is, you know, other than how you drive this pump, is what's the function? What's this about? What's this port for? What's these caps? And what? And if I pull all these out, what's behind there? So let's take it apart. You can see the components inside. So hopefully you have a better idea of, of how the pump actually functions and you can come to your own conclusions of what may be wrong with your equipment. First thing I want to do, I want to get these caps off the front. Let's look inside there. There's our inlet valves on the bottom, our outlet valves on the top. Most situations, most brands, most manufacturers, the inlet valve and the outlet valve will be the same physical part. That's not always so. And I say that because I don't know it to be fact. Every time I've ever opened one up, the inlets and the outlets have always been the same, but I am positive on some of the pumps I haven't got to play with. It's flipped around a little bit, thanks. Hey, I'm at a bit of a disadvantage with this not mounted to an engine. Nothing to hold it still. So give me a minute, I'm gonna kind of mock, bolt it up so that I can wrench on it. I got her bolted down, tighten it up, make sure she don't come loose. The reason I say that, I'm not gonna be going over any wrench sizes, tool sizes, none of that stuff. You figure that out on your own. So, first thing I need to do is I need to bust these caps off. Sometimes they go easy, sometimes they fight you all the way. I don't necessarily personally like to put an impact on here and run them off, I want to break them loose. Sometimes a little kiss of some heat might help. Uh, a lot of manufacturers will put a little bit of, of the blue sealant on here and that's quite difficult to break loose sometimes. But today I'm going to do it with this wrench. And how do I know I'm going to do it for this wrench? Because I broke these loose before I came here today. That's how come I know. Because. I knew ahead of the game that these things can be hard, and all I did was break it loose. And you can see it, it's still not <laughs> that easy to just unthread. So I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna get busy unthreading the rest of these. I feel like I got them busted loose. I will put my Ugga Dugga on it and finish taking them off. Out. That's what I'm talking about. I hope you can see. Look at all that sealant on that valve cap. Yeah, they fight you. You tell me, can you see that valve in there? We're gonna remove it. And I'm simply gonna take this pair of new nose pliers, reach in here and grab it by the tit. By the yeah. Yep, that's what it is. It's a little tip. Give it a little wiggle and pull it out. That's my valve. We'll pull those out. I've got a O-ring in there I'll pull out too. But let's get them all out and on the table. We'll take a look at them. We've got all the valves out of the chambers. 
go back in there, there there'll be a, a little o-ring in there hadn't already come out there's one there's two patterns out Now, let's go over what I just took out and what their function is. All right, there are my six caps, valve caps, if you want to call them, whatever you want. And there, that's a valve. That's nothing more than a simple little check valve. The O-rings that we pulled out of there they just gonna ride something like that. All right, let's take this valve apart and show you what's inside there. And do it without stopping my finger. So pop it apart, you're gonna have what the disc that I call it, look. I call that this the wafer remove it you got a spring and then there's nothing more than the cap all right the cage we call that the focus you rascal dog on your height the cage the spring the disc and this component i refer to as the seat got it now I know this component seems to be a, a very rudimentary item, check valve. Oh, no big deal. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I, that's probably gonna be the majority of the issues you find with a pump. You know, if you're not having a leak issue, if you're having cavitation, a pulsation, something going on, some chattering, whatever term it is you've adapted to call it, a flutter, what have you. If you've got a good water source and no air leak, this is gonna be the component I'm gonna look at first. Let me get this mess cleaned up. We'll take some more off. So we got the, the valves out of there. A six of them total, three inlet, three outlets. Can anybody guess how many pistons are gonna be in there? Leave a comment. How many pistons in this triplex plunger pump? Gonna use it. Edumacation now, ain't you boys? All right. Two, four, six, eight. Eight cap screws right here. Let's get those off. Use whatever size fits yours. Mine uh, are the size I'm using. Head, manifold, whatever you want to call it. Everybody get on the same page. Try and familiarize yourself with some of the terminology so yeah, everybody ain't standing there scratching your head, trying to have a conversation on the phone and nobody knows what the component's called. Now, we have that loose. Let's see if we can get it, pull it off of here. How many pistons? Oh, look at him. Come on, girl. Look at them little old tiny four gallon a minute pistons sitting there, buddy. Look at them things. Good gravy. All right, let's move on. How many pistons we got? That's right. For you Sesame Street experts, you got three of them there. You get a good look at them three pistons right there. You want to talk about moving volume of water? Well, the larger your piston, the more water you can move. I ain't opened up one of these in a long time, and I I'm quite surprised. I didn't remember them being that tiny. I didn't get all oil out. Look at that mess. Uh, 30 weight non-detergent for you guys who wonder, wonder what weight oil that is. 30 weight non-detergent will always serve you well. Let me give me a minute to clean up my mess. I'll be back. Ain't got time for messes. Now, it, it's just like it never happened. There you go, look at that. I, 
you can eat off that. I ain't going to, but I'll let you do it. All right, clean up that little old oil mess there. Let's get back over here to it. These three pistons, they're moving in and out in conjunction with that. Think of it. And this is probably not the right way for me to try and explain this, but this is the way that I think most people have gotten the most out of it. Is think of it as an engine. It's a three-cylinder engine. I got intake valves. I got pistons. I got exhaust valves or outlet valves. Think of it in that same configuration. The only thing I don't have here is fire. I have intake, I have compression, and I have exhaust. Think of it like that, one, two, and three. I've looked at these pistons. I don't have any cracks on them or anything like that. Grab each one of them, give them a little pull, make sure they're not wiggly on the, on the connecting rod, which this one doesn't appear to be. So that covers your pistons and your valves, and of course you're gonna have a series of seals As a series of seals back in here that is going to be your oil seals. And that separates the water, the oil from, the, from this side of the head. A lot of times folks will say that the oil seals are bad. They ain't. A lot of times it's just the, uh, the, the moisture from the ambient temperature get, getting inside this pump and turns it a little milky. And once you turn it a little milky, it's always milky. I can't fix that. You can flush that crankcase. I have with mineral spirits and, and done a really good job of cleaning it up and getting that, getting that water out of there. But for the most part, I don't care as long as it's not raising the level of the oil line. Then it's not water. In my opinion, this is your head and these are, these are the seals for each one of those pistons, and each one of these chambers on this particular brand. And keep in mind, this is a general overall look at how these pumps go together. Uh, some of these have, have a different uh, capture point here, and others just have the head smooth and machined, and man, I love those. They, they, you just put your package right down inside there, but this particular one's got this, uh, got this little old keeper here. We'll pop him up. Try and be ginger with it, especially if it's a, a unit that you're trying to repair. You don't want to be gouging up all this brass. We'll just pop one out and take a look. That's my low pro. Ooh, that's my seal. Look what I done spy. Right down in the middle. Look at that seal. See down in there? Yeah, let's take it apart. There it is. Now you can get a look at it. Pull the inner one out, see what we got. Cause it's shot too, son. That V packet is it, it, shot out. That seal shot. Probably the rest of them are too. I ain't gonna bother pull this. And your little backup ring. Now, this problem that we just we just discovered on this pump, the symptom on that would, would be under the head of this pump. Get that flashlight turned off. The symptom of that would be water dripping from under the head of this pump. Why it's just under garden hose pressure? Probably. Uh, and most like and, and definitely while you were trying to run the machine. Let's go ahead and get on in here and get these three pistons pulled and let's take a look at how they mount up and what, what's going on here. I would, I honestly would do that right now, but it'd be more effort for me to go find that stuff than it is just go and pull this off right now. I got something else I need to be doing and I want to go and get done with this and get it in the scrap bin. And I want you to take notice, there's gonna be something that seals this to this ceramic piston on every pump. There's got to be a way. You can't, you can't simply just have it there. Water will end up passing through the piston and into your crankcase. That's something else you need to be aware of is a cracked piston will do the exact same thing. This is not an example of a cracked piston. 
but I'm on, in my experience, sometimes they're very obvious. They'll always be running linear. It don't look good. I mean, no, it don't look good. It, it don't look good, but it don't have any cracks in it or chips or anything along that line. But the color, no, color's ugly. I don't know if that makes, no, never mind. This piston, it bolts into this right here. I, you you want a technical name for it? I ain't got it. It's your connecting part of your, it's, it's the top of your connected rod. But then if you lower that down, you'll see you've got an oil seal there. You need a little light? i give you a little light. Get in there and take a look. That's your oil seal. This one looks awful. This is a good example of an oil seal that looks uh, horrific. Well, we've, we've kind of covered the, the, the fluid in on the head of your pump. You got fluid in either side, don't care. Fluid out either side. We've covered your series of check valves, how the pistons rotate or cycle. What to look for on these pistons as far as any cracks, make sure they're sealed. And sealing the oil seals from the crankcase to the water side. All right, this backside of your drive system. All we want to look at in there is give you an idea of how that's driven. It's driven just like an automobile. It's got a crankshaft, connecting rods, So it's just your connecting rods and a crankshaft. And I bet you, some of you small engine boys are looking at this going, ain't no caps. That's right. In order to remove these rods, you're gonna pull this crankshaft out. Guys, I hope that answers a couple questions about how a plunger pump works, pressure wash pump, call it what you will. This is only one example of a drive system. <coughs> it's a direct drive, belt, gear, and then you got the, the, the lower end uh, uh, consumer equipment. It's got a little swash plate in there that drives the pistons back and forth. It's essentially doing the same thing at the end of the day. Hey, I hope this was informative. If you thought it was, how about getting that uh, thumbs up? Uh, yeah, I, I'd subscribe, I, I'd do that. and. Uh, Let's see what else I get into. We'll see you next time. <laughs> hey, yeah. I don't know what to tell you, son. That thing, you just gonna have to bow up on it and get it off there is all I know. Good gravy.